where you're going back with the intention of, I'm going to learn something new about myself today based on my past. And hopefully that's going to allow me to show up today in a different way. Or is it every time something bad happens, you reflect and say, oh my goodness, now I know more about myself. That's what therapy's done for me is it's a full hour long session of just reviewing and rewatching the movie of my own past so that I can now understand at a deeper level what's shaped me so that now I can choose. Next Level Nation, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of Next Level University, where we teach you how to level up your life, your love, your health, and your wealth. We hope you enjoyed our latest episode. It was episode number 1,268. Learning about yourself is one of the hardest things in the world. That is a fact. Today, for episode number 1,269, do you even understand how much your past has affected you? I had a moment the other day, Alan, where I was taken back to middle school during one of the podcasts I was on. And uh, White in middle school. White in middle school. Also, I was actually taken back by Austin Powers. I know you've been talking about Austin Powers. I was watching Austin Powers like a month ago. And it was the How one where they were- How interesting is that? We didn't even talk about that. We did not talk about that. Yeah. It was, yeah. it was Gold Member where they were singing Daddy Wasn't There. And I remember <sighs> thinking, that I was like, oh, that's such an interesting song coming from somebody who did who grew up without a father and had current experience or uh, so many constant experiences of daddy not being there and it made me think of all the podcasts I've been on all the episodes I've done all the times I've told my story and how uh, up until recently I really didn't understand how much growing up without a dad affected me I didn't realize how much my past affected the Kevin you see in front of you today and really after talking with so many people, I think we forget that the reason we feel the way we feel today is not because of yesterday. It's not because of a month ago. It's not because of six months ago. For most of us, it's because of years and years and years and years ago. And I think we forget that. And I don't know what it is. I don't know the reasoning behind that. I wonder if it's just because there's so much contrast between where we are and where we used to be. And it just, you forget. But that's really the question. That's the goal of this episode is are you running from something that ha happened to you in the past? Are you running from an old version of you? Are you running from something embarrassing? Are you running from shame? What in your past still has its hold on you today? My thought behind this, and this is usually the example I use on podcasts, when you're born, you are born into a soil, and that's where you plant your roots. And those are usually where your roots stay, so you have to understand that there's still some potential nutrients coming up from those roots that are buried in your past somewhere. And I, I just use that as an example because I think for many of us, we go and we learn a bunch of stuff, you know, and we say, oh, I'm learning and I'm becoming more and I'm evolving. But there's always that part of us that's kind of connected to the past. And until you become really comfortable or really aware, I think that's that's the first step, right? Becoming aware of what happened, aware of that how that impacts you then you can figure out, okay, how do I become more comfortable? How do I become more open to that? How do I rebuild or realign a relationship? But at the end of the day, I think for so many of us, we believe the current moment is the most important or we believe the future is the most important. I think just taking a look into the past is always a very valuable practice because that's where most of the trauma is. If you think about it, that's where, unless you're experiencing trauma in this current moment, it's most likely in your past, right? It, will it happen in the future? Of course, I'm sure. But, you know, that that's my, that's my theory in this episode. There's so much that we have that is just stored in the past. It's almost like, it's almost like you move out of a house and then you move into a new house and you put all your junk in the basement. And then you just, you try to forget about it. It's like, ah, that, that's all crap anyway. I don't need to worry about that. Then you move to a nicer house, but you have the same stuff that you move to the basement but at this point that stuff is like maybe it's moldy or maybe there's creatures crawling around in there because you you've never looked at it you don't look at it you just put it in the basement and you let it live there and eventually you know you move into another house and same thing happens you, you can't run from your past you can and run eventually as fast it can take the whole house down 100 percent, 100 percent. you that's the one thing you can't run from because it, mm -hmm. this is the interesting thing it's attached to you their past is attached to you in some way, shape, or form. So that is the jam that we're jamming on in this episode. 
This is actually why, so Emilia, she calls it a board of advisors and she says coaches and mentors and training programs and books and uh, family members and uh, peak performance partners and business partners, all this stuff, board of advisors. So every, every company out there has a board of directors. And essentially what it is, is they all sit around a table and they talk about, okay, this is the state of the union. So Kevin, myself and Christina, we do this. Okay. Here's the state of the business. Here's all the departments. Here's all the team members. Here's how we're doing. Are we in the red? Are we in the green? Are we in the yellow? Uh, green is growing. Red is dying the wrong direction, deconstructing. And then yellow is coasting. And so Emilia has this concept of everyone needs a board of advisors, a board of directors. And one of the people that she thinks needs to be on your board of directors, meaning the peers you have in your life is a therapist. And this is why. So I have a therapist and rather than go to therapy because something's wrong with you, it's more of, I want to go to therapy to reprocess my past so that I can learn about myself so that I can now understand myself at a deeper level and, and invest in a brighter future. So instead of there's something wrong with me, I need to go get fixed. My car is broken. So I have to bring it to the mechanic. No, no, no. What if your car is already great and maybe there's some rust that could be improved and then you bring it to the mechanic to soup your car up? Because I think a lot of people think of therapy as like, I have to, I'm, there's something wrong with me. Instead of, there's nothing wrong with me. I've been through trauma because that's every human has been through some forms of trauma, pain, failure, suffering, some people worse than others. There's a spectrum here. But rather than I'm going to go to therapy because someone's going to fix me or something's wrong with me. No, 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 no. Nothing's wrong with you. You've been through a lot of things and those things have shaped you. And so the quote that I try to live by, my belief system is a lot of things happen to us there's a few things that really shape us. One of them for you is your father. For me, my father passed away in a car accident, my stepfather leaving at 14. Those things really shaped me. Those were pivotal moments. And so I think of like, okay, if tomorrow's a tough day, think of that as like one little nudge in a certain direction versus my car accident at 26, which was like a big shove in a completely different direction. Okay, so there's levels of this. So every single day is shaping you really. Um, and hopefully you're doing that intentionally and proactively with us on this podcast. But I want to share this story. So so I was on the phone with uh, someone that I coach. And she was talking about her childhood. And when you coach so many people, you start to realize, okay, so everyone's childhood has shaped them in some shape or form. There's And, and as you get older and older and older... It's almost like your childhood kind of creates the belief system and the belief system has both positive and negative long-term repercussions. So, so I coach one person who's 17 and I coach someone else who's 47 and the person who's 47, there's belief systems that were created in their childhood that have compounded into more positive and more negative results. And so when when I coach this younger person who's only 17, I get so excited because it's like, you're going to be working on yourself. And the compound effect is that it's very infancy. I mean, you know, I'm so excited for him. But anyways, I'm on the phone with a client and she's talking about chi her childhood. And she, she essentially had a little bit of the opposite experience that I had, which where she was very protected. So her parents essentially, you know, she was the firstborn. They were very fearful that they were going to do it wrong and they didn't know what they were doing. And so, and they also drew the conclusion on some level that she wasn't necessarily naturally gifted. And because of that, they were constantly trying to protect her from hard truths, essentially, you know, don't go to the hard private school, you know, just, just start small. And, you know, they didn't expect much of her. They, they, they just wanted to protect her, that kind of thing. So this is known as helicopter parenting. And this is a thing. So we're on the phone and, and I'm like, well, this is not like a you issue. I know it feels like it is, but I can promise you this is a thing. This is not just a you thing. And I think that's really freeing for people because a lot of us feel so alone in these things. I know, Kev, you and I have shared things about each other where it's like, oh, you went through that too? And it's like, oh, okay, so that's not just me. That's not a me issue. 
That's an issue that a lot of people go through. And so with the helicopter parenting, if you've, if you had someone, I think of it like uh, parents that are so scared. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie bubble boy, they're so scared of their child getting sick that they like wrap them in saran wrap in a bubble and they don't want them to ever experience any pain. It's kind of like that. And so anyways, here's what we do. We're on the call. We're on zoom and I share my screen and I look up helicopter parenting and we pull up an article together and I say, okay, are you ready to explore your past? And she's like, yeah. And so we go through it and I'm reading this article has 15 symptoms of helicopter parenting and it's got this little excerpt about each one and I'm reading them and it's like, Oh, 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 that's me to a T. And so it's like very freeing. It's like, this is not a you issue. This is a thing that a lot of people deal with. And you, now that you learned that, now you're so empowered to go and overcome it. You don't have to be this way anymore. Now that you know that this is not a you issue, this is not who you are. This is who you've been shaped up until now. And now that you know that, you can choose. And I think that that's the most inspiring thing in the world. So the question I wrote down is, how much have you been reprocessing your past from a higher sense of awareness? That's why I go back and watch movies like Austin Powers because, and this is a silly little side tangent real quick. Um, in Austin Powers 2, the second one, um, I think it's, who's the female character in that movie? Um, Elizabeth Hurley, is she in the second one? No, that's the first one. Heather Graham? Heather, Heather Graham. Graham. I was watching it with Emilia and I said, it's so interesting because as a little boy, like a young man, like I think I was like 11 or 12, probably too young to be watching that movie. Um, but I was so obsessed with Heather Graham. I was like, oh, she's so beautiful, right? And it's so interesting. And I told Emilia, I said, it's so interesting how like, I think you're more beautiful than Heather Graham is. You know, it's like so, like I achieved my dreams in some ways, right? Um, but why do you go back? Because you can reprocess from a higher sense of awareness. I used to think Heather Graham was the most attractive girl in the whole world and I could never get someone like that and blah, blah, blah. Now I'm like, oh, okay, interesting. Heather Graham, cool. Like, My name is Nathan Schwarman. I'm from Lawrence, Kansas. I've been a client of Allen's for coming on two years now and I really can't recommend this program enough. Um, Allen's always there for me uh, with great advice uh, and holding me accountable. Uh, every step of the way and and really leading by example I've grown a lot uh, in his program but he, he's grown alongside with me so I'd, I'd really recommend joining up on the program and, and joining the community so anyways it's really really powerful to go back and reprocess whether it's the helicopter parent thing or watching a movie I, I talked about the rundown how I did not realize how violent that movie was until I was watching it with Emilia and I was like oh this is like a super bro violent movie and a lot of the jokes that I didn't get, I now understand. Um, and so a lot of parents talk about when they have kids, they watch these kids' movies and they realize, oh, I didn't realize that there's some adult jokes only. And then the kids grow up, they watch them again and go, oh. And so I think watch your own life. Watch the movie of your own life again. And I know a lot of people struggle with their memory, so it's hard to do that. But um, that's what therapy's done for me is it's a full hour long session of just reviewing and re-watching the movie of my own past so that I can now understand at a deeper level what's shaped me so that now I can choose. Yeah, self-awareness. I think this is just another reason why self-awareness is so important because how do you show up? If you don't know why you're showing up the way you're showing up every single day, it's really hard to influence that. You know, and if like, okay, if you were in a, obviously, so I grew up without a dad, my a single mom and my grandmother raised by them. So I didn't really have any understanding of what a relationship looked like. I never had that. That was never modeled. So, okay, how does that affect me today? Right? One of the things I said the other day, and it's accurate right now, I said, I never, I never had a man to show me how to like shave. Like I never experienced that. I didn't know what that was like. I never, when I learned about the birds and the bees, my mom said, don't get somebody pregnant. It'll be bad for you. It's like, all right, point taken. Point taken. <laughs> right? So like, how does that, how does that still affect me to this day? How did you learn how to tie a tie? YouTube, probably. Yeah. I don't know. That I was a weird moment for me without a dad. Of like, yeah, same. oh, I don't same, yeah. have anyone to teach me this. Remember yeah. at your wedding? Uh, I remember Matt. 
he came over and uh, he he told me the story about how he came over to you. He's like, "Hey, man, one button, one button, brother, one button." <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you got to remember one button. One. Button. I didn't know that. Yeah. So for those listening, uh, my suit uh, jacket, I had two buttons buttoned, and Matt came over and he's like, "Hey, one button, man, only one." Yeah. I was like, All right, yeah, man, one button. We and he knows. Know. He's styling. Matt's styling. Yeah, for Matt's sure. That's a stud, so he knows. But that's that's the interesting thing. And okay, here's the other thing. How I accept that feedback from Matt is also based on my childhood. Like that's the everything, everything. It's like me being open to that and respect, receptive is like, okay, this is like a father figure telling me to do something. Like that's interesting, right? Like it's just the reason I wanted to do this episode is if you're out there, you're already, if you're listening to this podcast, you are most likely the type of human who reflects on their past. But are you doing it from a place of, proactive positive construction where you're going back with the intention of I'm going to learn something new about myself today based on my past and hopefully that's going to allow me to show up today in a different way or is it every time something bad happens you reflect and say oh my goodness now I know more about myself if you can do it from a proactive place I just think it's a little bit easier to do it now obviously you know that's we don't always have that option but that was really my goal in this episode if you can understand yourself at a deeper level every day, you're going to be in a wonderful place. Now, is it challenging? Yes, absolutely. Are there painful times that come with that? Yes, absolutely. But it's that weird thing of, I don't want you to get 15 years down the road and still be making the same mistakes you're making today because you never looked 15 years in the past. That, that's my, that's my last thing I'd say. Uh, you know, Kev, I've been listening to Jim Rohn a lot. He says things very well. Strong communicator. He says... I'll tell you the formula for success. It is positive choices done every single day over years and years and years. He said, let me show you the formula for failure. Small, seemingly insignificant errors in judgment compounded every day over years and years and years. And those errors in judgment are usually unconscious or subconscious. So you have the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and then the unconscious mind. A lot of scientists call it non-conscious mind. But a lot of this stuff was stored when we were very young. It's kind of like language, right? You don't remember when you first learned English. At one point, every word we're saying right now, Kev, we didn't know at one point. And now we just say them like we've known them the whole time. And so... That's great, because now we can speak well, but it's not good. What if we downloaded stuff that was, that's still running without us even knowing it? Well, definitely it's kind of like the fish out of water doesn't even know that it's in water type of thing. So mm-hmm. at the end of the day, that's what I've found. And coaching, by the way, it's almost like, okay, here's the goals you want to achieve. Here's the parts of your past we have to reevaluate and reprocess in order to achieve them. It's almost always that. Yeah. It's a very important episode. It probably sounds very simple, but if it's not a daily practice, if it's not an intentional conscious practice, that would be my challenge for you is what can you do to make it more conscious? And maybe it's maybe it's in a place of safety with a therapist or a counselor or whatever it may be. All right. I, I try to do this pretty often, just kind of on my own through my experiences. But again, I have the opportunity. I talk about my life a lot. So when you talk about your life every day, things jump up and you start to see trends and patterns and I have very aware people around me. So, you know, oftentimes we're talking about deep stuff. So I thought this would be a, a very valuable episode. Next level nation. If you are listening to us and say you listen to us three times a week, what would happen if you listen to us every single day, seven times a week? How much better would you feel? How much more consistent could you be? How much more in aligned? could you end up being? If you listen to us every day and you want to make sure you never miss an episode, make sure you subscribe to the show. I think I looked at the stat today, Alan, look at me looking at data. And I think 18% of people who listen to us are not subscribed. And that is a, a large amount of humans. So if you want to make sure you don't ever miss us, you want to get a little bit better every day, you want to get to the next level every single day, subscribe to the show on the platform you listen to us on. And if you do listen to us regularly, I was actually listening to us reviewing the episode uh, this morning, actually. Uh, This is like listening to your favorite song on Spotify, assuming we're your favorite podcast, which I hope we are. 
Next Level Live is like going to the concert. It will not be a speech or a lecture. It's going to be an experience. We have three different groups. We're going to have breakout sessions. It's going to be about self-awareness, health, wealth, and love. It's going to be all of the very best things that we've accumulated packed into one day. You're going to meet the team, meet Kevin and myself. It is going to be extraordinary. Please reach out to Kevin or myself, Kevin at nextleveluniverse.com, Alan at nextleveluniverse.com, or click the link in the show notes. The landing page has all the information that you need. It is a beautiful venue. This is a very, very nice venue. We are paying quite a bit for this and there will be food. It's going to be great. So we hope you join us. Click the link in the show notes and we hope to see you there. Next Level Nation tomorrow for episode number 1,270. People aren't as confident as you think. Facts. I'm excited to talk about that. We have some good stories when it comes to that. As always, we love you. We appreciate you. Grateful for each and every one of you. And at NLU, we do not have fans. We have family. We will talk to you all tomorrow. Please reach out.